And we're live. Good evening, everybody, and we welcome you to our fifth annual Italian American Baseball Foundation Gala. Although, obviously, this one a little bit different. It's our very first and hopefully our last virtual gala. I'm Wayne Randazzo. I'll be the host for this evening. Soon, I'll be joined by the great IABF podcast team. If you haven't heard the podcast yet, Spaghetti and Baseballs, Natalie Spedalieri and Chris Colabello do a great job with that, and we'll be saying hi to them in just a few moments. The Italian American Baseball Foundation is thankful to have each and every one of you joining us tonight, and we have some great guests to honor this evening, including some New York City natives and one guy from New England, too. We've got Lee Mazzilli, of course, the great New York Met, and had uh, certainly some moments as a member of the Yankees and in the Yankees organization as well. We've got the hitting coach of the Cubs and a Queens native, Anthony Iapochi, to honor tonight. And a former Major League General Manager who's now in the Giants organization, a guy who's been all over Major League Baseball, including some time with the Mets, J.P. Ricciardi. It's our pleasure to have our 2019 guest of honor and Phillies manager, Joe Girardi, introducing Lee Mazzilli tonight. We'll have our 2017 executive honoree, Gary Perone, introduce J.P., and our IABF co-founder, Frank Catalanato, will be introducing Anthony later on tonight. You know, a weird year. We all know that. It's been a year certainly to forget in a lot of instances and a year that has been tragic to say the least. But the IABF has continued to march on despite the world health crisis in the year 2020. And many of the IABF events were canceled this year. But the focus was then divided toward the first responders, toward medical and food supply donations and toward a different sort of way for the IABF to be contributors. In April, the IABF helped organize the delivery of thousands of surgical masks and gloves to several Brooklyn hospitals, police precincts, firehouses, EMTs, and nursing homes. The response to our donation was overwhelming on a national level. In May, the IABF conducted a successful joint effort food donation, along with Carmine and Sons Pizzeria, Italian enclaves, and the NYPD Columbia Association in donating 50 lunches to feed our brave heroes at the NYPD Counterterrorism Unit. We thank IABF members Ray Garini, Lou Bernardi, and Carmine Gangone for their help and teamwork with our donations. Also in May, 50 meals were prepared and delivered for the frontline workers at NYU Langone Hospital in Brooklyn. And our last food donation in June was to the Hunterdon Medical Center in Flemington, New Jersey, our friends at Maria's Cafe in Kingwood, New Jersey, prepared 50 lunches that we delivered for the ER workers at the medical center there. So the IABF, even without baseball for much of the year, stayed pretty busy. Special thanks to everyone that donated their time and their money in helping make our donations possible. And despite COVID-19, the IABF was able to continue its mission, however, in a much different controlled and limited environment. Of course, there was some baseball involved. We sent several boxes of baseball equipment to our friends in Viterbo, Italy. One year ago, we had the opportunity to visit the Rams in Viterbo and conduct clinics on their home turf with former major leaguer Mike Pagliarulo and the IABF's Mark Cardillo. We were knocked out by their enthusiasm and their love of the game. We'd like to thank Franco Scamperin, Cinzia Petroselli, for the great work that they're doing with youth baseball in Viterbo, especially during these difficult times. And we've got a lot more donations and a lot more events planned for 2021 that we hope that we'll be able to conduct. During the second half of 2020, we were able to sponsor some youth baseball events, including in July, the Van Ness Little League, hosting a three-day 13U wood bat tournament that ran from July 31st to August 2nd. Also in July, the IABF sponsored the Stytown Baseball Camp, which is owned and operated by board member and Philly scout Dan Palumbo. Stytown Baseball Camp allowed New York City youth the opportunity to get back on the diamond after a long layoff. We look forward to sponsoring this New York City tradition for many years. In September, the IABF sponsored the Diamond Spikes College Baseball Showcase in Baldwin, New York, along with our partners Access Baseball and Max Effort Baseball. And in October, a partnership with Firecracker Baseball and the Cage Warriors for our Scout Day College Baseball Showcase in Middle Village, Queens. 
There was even a successful fundraising night on August 24th. It was a sip and smoke cigar night at Roslyn Social in Roslyn, Long Island. And it was a fun evening and a, really a first chance to see some familiar faces in a very long time. Of course, as I mentioned, there's also an IABF podcast. It's Spaghetti and Baseballs, and it's hosted by our very own Natalie Spitalieri and Chris Colobello. It's a dual language podcast. It's been a big hit. There have been viewers all over the United States and in Italy, and there have been some special guests, including John Franco and Mike Napoli and J.P. Morosi and Lee Mazzilli and Drew and Sal Butera, among others. So we'd like to introduce you to our podcast hosts as Natalie and Chris join us right now. Hey, how are you? Thank you so much, Wayne, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Chris, how are you? Hi, Natalie. We're the number one rated podcast this side of the Mississippi that uh, has Italian-Americans running it. So thank you for the wonderful introduction, Wayne. I know. It's been amazing. I'm so glad you dressed up for this compared to our other Yeah, podcasts. this is sharp for me. I, you told me to wear a blazer, but I, I could only dig up my sweater. I mean, it's, you know, quarantine clothing is, uh, you know, some of my, my suits are all put away because I didn't think I'd have to wear them for anybody. No, it's all I good. I can't be all as sharp as Wayne. He's the host. I know exactly. You can't show up the host. Hey, with the gown. I mean, that's a that's a big look in the, in the virtual gown. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And again, I just want to thank everyone for joining us, Chris, Wayne. I'm sure you would love to be together in this moment, but here we are virtually. And because of virtually keeping everyone safe, uh, Spaghetti Baseballs was born. How about that? Yeah, I, I mean, it's been super exciting for me because obviously we've got to interact and, and talk and, and learn more about people that I really respect and love in the game of baseball, people that I grew up watching, um, people that are obviously uh, taking a big part in the game uh, in today's game. So it's been it's been awesome. And then the the pleasure of uh, getting to I don't I don't know what our title is here. I think we're just uh, we're entertainers. We're, we're additional people to, to the to the MC of the event and uh, just trying to add value however we can, bring some laughs, bring some smiles, and kind of cut an hour out of everybody's week and uh, help them not think about uh, the stuff that's going on in the world. Are you awesome. ready to be along to uh, ask some questions to the honoree tonight? Are you guys ready for that? Yeah, let's take it. Go ahead. Well, we will get to our uh, honorees in just a moment. Natalie and Chris, thank you very much. We'll be hearing from both of you in a little bit. Sounds good. We are about to introduce our 2020 IABF guest of honor. And to introduce the great Lee Mazzilli, we welcome last year's guest of honor, manager of the Philadelphia Phillies, Joe Girardi. Tonight, we honor a man who's not only a great husband and a great father of three children, who was a great player, a great coach, and a great man. But what I love about Lee Mazzilli the most is when he would come to my office or come on the field, or I would see him at a dinner or see him over the holidays, he always made my day better. Lee, that is a gift. You'd give me a hug and tell me stories and tell me to keep my head up and keep going. And Lee, I am so thankful for our friendship. But we, the Italian-American Baseball Federation, want to honor you as the guest of honor. You have earned it, you deserve it, and you are a great ambassador for the Italian-Americans. God bless you, Lee, and we love you. All right, well, let's hear from the man himself, one of the great New Yorkers that ever got to the big leagues. And, of course, I'm partial to the Mets, Lee, so I remember your time with the Mets, but you were – all over Major League Baseball and a great player throughout your day as well. First round pick. There's nobody like Lee Mazzilli. Lee, take away our guest of honor. Thank you, Wayne. And and Joe, I love you. Thank you so much. Uh, you mean the world to me as well. I look at him as a as a my kid brother. So coming from Joe, it's special. And I said, you know, New York did two wrong things. The Yankees did a wrong thing by not keeping him, and the Mets did a wrong by not hiring him but he's in philly and i think he's going to turn that organization around and he's special to me and my family so thank you joe and i i am honored to be here and uh wayne i am honored to be the guest of honor and it is very special to me to be amongst my family the italian americans and i hold that very dear uh from the past honorees of piazza franco valentine uh jp morosi all those it's just, it's special. And uh, so I thank you all for uh, having me. 
The great Lee Mazzilli, and I know Natalie and Chris have uh, some questions for you, Lee, so we'll turn it over to them. I did have to, I, I, I want to, I, you know, Joe was going to yell at me, so I wanted to say thank you. This is what I received. Chris and Natalie, thank you so much for this. And, you know, most people and athletes or entertainers, they have so many gifts like we all do on our shelves. And uh, I was very fortunate enough in my life to win a few World Series and, and have some rings and whatever. And I, I don't have any of that stuff. And my wife will attest to this, that on my shelf is my Italian American Award. I have my Italian American Law Enforcement Award. I have an Italian American New York State Award from Cuomo. So I hold this very dear to me, the Italian American uh, family. So thank you all. Thank you. Chris, you want to congratulations? That's, that's awesome. I mean, I, it's tough to follow up. I, I feel like you, you know, you, you hit me right in the feels, Lee. And obviously we got a chance to talk with spaghetti mm -hmm. and baseballs, but could you have ever imagined when you were growing up as a kid of having to have the career that you did and, and to be in, uh, remembered the way you are now? Probably not, but that's it, a great question. It's a great question because growing up, that's all I ever thought about. I never thought about ever doing anything else other than playing baseball. It's weird. I don't know if I didn't make it what I'd be. Uh, just baseball was, you know, you, you just such tunnel vision about making it. Uh, and it was a different time. And baseball was so much different back then. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's the one thing that I felt that I was uh, – you know, that I was going to do. I really did. I just felt from 10 years old I was going to be a major league player. I just got lucky to do it. So with that said, with your World Series rings and um, the Italian American Baseball Awards, what have been your greatest accomplishments throughout your baseball career? What sticks out the most throughout all this? I, you know, a lot of people ask. I, I would say three, three things. One would be the first day that I got called up to the big leagues because that's our dream is to get to the big leagues. Uh, and I'll tell you a little story about the first day. Um, probably the home run in the All-Star game and winning the World Series. Those three things. Because I think as, as baseball players, that's the three things that we want to accomplish or try to achieve is get to the big leagues, you know, maybe make an All-Star team. And, oh, God willing, we can win a World Series. So I'm very blessed and very lucky to accomplish those three things, you know. I if, you did, if you did nothing else, that would be a really good resume. If you yeah. did nothing else yeah, in your life, that would be a really yeah. cool and resume. I think, you know, and Anthony and JP will, will talk about this. You know, God willing that we spend one day in the big leagues, whatever we did and how hard we worked to get there, it's worth it. To oh. Just put one, one day in the big leagues. So, yes, it's worth it. So I, I just want to tell you a quick thing. My first day, I just mentioned my first day in the big leagues. And you'll get a kick. And I know JP is going to get a kick out of this when he hears this. But first day, 1976, I walked in. I had Siva, Kuzman, Matlack, Joe Torrey. They were all my teammates. And I remember walking into Wrigley Field, 1976, and I met Joe Torrey for the first time. Uh, and there he was. I, I just told him this story about a couple of weeks ago. We were at, at his house. And I said, you remember the first time I met you? And I said, there you were. You were on a training table. You had your glasses on. You had a cigar in your mouth. And he was reading the racing form. And I said, ooh, I'm going to like the big leagues. <laughs> and guess what? That's 45 years later. We're still best of friends. And that means a lot to me. Oh, that's awesome. wonderful. Yeah. Right. Awesome. The pride and joy of Abraham Lincoln High School, Lee Mazzilli. Lee, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank, thank you for having me. God bless you all. JP, Anthony, you, I'm so glad I can share this with you as well. So enjoy. Wear your mask. Stay healthy. I want to see you all very soon. God bless. Have a very, very happy holiday to all. All right, Mazzo, thank you very much. That's the great Lee Mazzilli. He is our guest of honor this year at our IABF Gala. Right now, we want to encourage you to take a look at our online memorabilia auction. It's going until 1030 tonight. It's a huge part of our fundraising efforts for this evening, and every single bid is enormously helpful. So there's some great sports memorabilia on there. There's movie and rock and roll things. There's VIP experience packages. There's even a chance to mingle. And let me tell you, as someone who's mingled before with two-time Cy Young Award winner, 
Jacob DeGrom. That is a can't-miss event to talk to Jacob, who's certainly the best pitcher in baseball right now. You have a private VIP cocktail party with Jacob DeGrom. That is available in the auction tonight. So you can go there, and it's all available on our online memorabilia auction this evening. It is on the IABF website tonight. So check it out, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to get you a night with Jacob DeGrom. That would be pretty great. We also want to thank all of our big sponsors tonight, the legend himself, Steve Napolitano and the AmTrust Group. We'd like to thank him. We'd like to thank the Cincinnati Reds for their help tonight. St. Nick's Alliance, Major League Baseball, the Sullivan Group, Vona and Vona, Italian Enclaves, Curemark, and Chandler Group, along with the Order Sons and Daughters of Italy in America. We thank all of our great sponsors for helping us put together this virtual gala for the year 2020. Right now, we'd like to introduce our 2020 Achievement Award winner. He's the hitting coach of the Chicago Cubs. He is a New York City kid, that's for sure. He's from Astoria, Queens, and you know, he's the hitting coach of the Cubs right now. I grew up in Chicago, and I broadcast for the Mets. He grew up in a Queens, and he hits, he's the hitting coach of the Cubs, so we're a little bit backwards right now. But Anthony Iapochi does a great job, and we are pleased to have him as our Achievement Award winner tonight. And to welcome him is our 2018 Achievement Award recipient and IABF co-founder, former big leaguer, Frank Catalanano. Hey, guys. First, I'd like to congratulate all the award winners tonight. Um, last year, I was honored to receive the IABF Achievement Award. And tonight, it's my pleasure to announce Anthony Iapochi as the 2020 Achievement Award winner. Anthony has done a lot for the game of baseball. Currently, he's the Chicago Cubs hitting coach, and he's had a great impact on many of the game's top hitters. Italian-Americans are very proud of you, Anthony, especially those involved in the IABF. Congratulations, and keep up the good work. Frank Catalanato, thank you very much. And now we bring in our 2020 Achievement Award winner, Cubs hitting coach, Anthony Iapochi. Anthony, congratulations. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for that introduction. Always admire the way, Cat, the way you play the game and, and always watch your football. It's been good to connect with you. Um, I want to, con uh, want to congratulate Lee and, and JP for their contributions to the game of baseball. Lee, what you've done as a coach, as a player, I admired you as a kid, uh, as a manager, and JP, I've always followed you just because of the attack lesson you made from scouting to what it's like to run an organization over the bar. So uh, I want to thank the IABF, especially Joe Q and Carmine for coming into my family's lives and, and having all these types of connections uh, that our family's been awesome with, and, and not only for introducing us to the organization, but like just being great human beings and always checking in and, and checking in on and, and doing lunches and things like that. I'm also looking forward to growing the game of baseball and interviewing for anybody from coaches as well as the United States. Um, the IABF is also connected me with people like Ray Neville, like Gary Perone and Lou Bernardi, who introduced me to a lot of these people, as well as in their relationships with uh, CC Danielle and, and Adam. It's, it's been really fun doing the podcast. The, the one thing I wanted to say was growing up in the story of Queens, you, you collect thousands and hundreds of thousands of baseball cards and you separate the players that you admire and good players, especially Mets and Yankees. But then I also had a stack of anybody who had an Italian last name because uh, then you had something in common of where you wanted to go uh, with that last name. So you'd have a stack of maybe players and people never even heard of, but they were Italian last names and I, and I kept a separate pack of them. But now being some of those names, being guys like Johnny Franco, Lee Zillia, Rodon Pax, Piazza, Girardi, Valentine, and, and a guy that I worked closely with last year, and, and Joe Madden, uh, who's like a mentor with me. It's, it's, it's like this honor of going through these baseball cards and now being part of these guys, talking ball with you, but being connected to the IABF. Um, I would say one of the biggest questions I got asked through, I think everybody would appreciate this, at a dinner around the table, people were talking about these topics. Was when I played the minor leagues and coaching the big leagues, I mean, why are you wearing a chili pepper around your neck, or why do you have a red 
pepper in the locker, and then you have to explain to them, you know, what the Italian horn means and, and what it means to you as a guy who is your career. Um, so I wanted to thank the IABF, thank Joe, thank Carmine, uh, me and JP. It's, it's good to be a part of you guys in this award. Uh, Joe, it's right here. Appreciate it much. And thank you for everything. I'm looking forward to growing the game of baseball with you guys. Hi, Anthony. Congratulations. I actually love the story about the pepper. <laughs> because I would always get it sent to me, or if I, you know, I'd wear it around my neck, and then if it broke or I got injured, my gut I would send another one. And then I started you know, hanging the ones you go online now, hanging a locker, or give it to Napoli, Joey Gallo, Anthony Rizzo, and they would get it. And then, that is yeah, yeah. And then, you know, the conversations that we talked about. The podcast is it sucks a gravy. You know, you do the seven yes. pages, you know, the feast in Brooklyn. Why are you carrying a section? Like, oh, this has to so, actually have conversations with uh, that, you know, that you're a part of and it's a baseball at the same time. It's pretty much feel pretty comfortable. Uh, absolutely, that's classic. Classic. Yeah. Post, congratulations. I owe you a phone call first and foremost. We need to yeah, get on a phone. Too. Yeah, we get to get on a phone call together and uh, recap the season. Obviously, we talked earlier on in the year with uh, Spaghetti and Baseballs and just getting to know you. I, I look forward more and more to talking to you and and getting to pick your brain and talk hitting and things like that. Um, kind of the same question that went toward Lee. I mean, obviously, you would have loved to have gotten there as a player, I imagine. But did you ever think, you know, Major League hitting coach was in the cards for you? You know, I actually never even really wanted to be a hitting coach because you know how hard that is. It's like impossible. You know, you just you got into baseball for coaching to help players maybe um, to maybe not make the same mistakes you did, and, and then from there it just kind of took off. You, you just stay after the players, and then you're part of the organization. You bounce around a little bit and find a way. Um, but like well, the same thing with Lee, I never saw myself doing anything else except baseball, whether it was playing 11 years in the minor leagues or now coaching. And being involved in professional baseball, like I was like over 25 years right now, it was so fast. So um, I can remember winning the high school city championship my senior McClancy in 1991. We beat some Does anybody out there? Sorry about it. And then being in the dog pile and kind of walk off and be like, how do I get back here? So that was always a goal of mine from 91, like how to get back. And I can remember sitting at the stadium as a coach for the first time. It was just a cool feeling seeing your family, you know, like. 15, 20 years later, up there and waited at them, and then just kind of navigating your way through the big leagues. So we're talking about never thinking that you're going to be a hitting coach and talking about your high school days. I'm actually going to steal a book, a page out of your book. Um, Backtrack for a second. IBF is a great platform where we build the game of baseball in Italy and the U.S. with um, young boys and girls by providing equipment, showcases, and everything. And my question is, for these boys who, who who participate in our clinics and tournaments, um, we want to we want them to say that it started with the IBF. So your question, your icebreakers when you talk to your guys is where did it start? So where did it start for you? That's right. It started for me on 42nd Street and 25th Avenue, playing stickball on the street, and uh, you hashtag it. We talk about that. It, it's one of the things that I talk to our players about when I have them present. And from the group after one of our advanced meetings, and each player where they're from uh, kind of takes a picture and Google Earth where they're from, and they talk about their days of, of where it started. And why we talk about that is because you, you're playing with freedom without being judged. You have no coach. You have to make decisions on your own. You have to get into arguments with people in your neighborhood. Uh, so where did it start? It's taken me, you know, from 25th day to 42nd Street. My story that you don't realize that you're training yourself to have is day on how to get, how to play and make decisions on your own. But it's also taken me, you know, playing with tech, uh, Coach of the Rangers to Shinzu Chiu and Korea, Adrian Beltre, Dominican, and Elvis Andrews, Venezuela, or Jerson Profar, or Curso, and they, you know, even Anthony Rizzo going back and forth to Florida, New Jersey, for his colleagues, and his, his son in New Jersey is going back to Florida. It's just taking you places all, all around the world and to, to be that, in your in your clubhouse and players presenting in front of themselves and letting their guard down and showing how proud they are um and of course i would have to be the first one to present some of the guys get emotional it's pretty cool but it really shows where you're from and where it all started for you and then when it's time to kind of go astray for some of the players we hang up those pictures on the wall on the cage and go hey this is where it started i don't even forget where it came from because i think sometimes 
when we go through struggles where we forget where we came from, where it was fun, and we really enjoy playing. I completely, I think it's great. And I'll be honest, I definitely uh, steal that question often. <laughs> but I think it's a great conversation. And it goes back to like home, you know, the basics. And you really appreciate everything. Before I go, I just want to tell you one thing. The Chicago Cubs have a lot of cool players on them. But you and Nap are the only two I want to hang out with. <laughs> All right. Anthony Iapochi, our 2020 Achievement Award winner. Congratulations, Anthony. Hope to see you soon. Thanks, man. All right. That's Anthony Iapochi. It's so great to hear him talk about separating the baseball cards to include the Italian players. You, you see my shrine to Joe DiMaggio over my shoulder here. And, you know, that's what it's all about in the Italian American Baseball Foundation is honoring not only the history of the game and the Italian Americans in it. I mean, all the way back to Ed Abaticcio and, of course, Joe DiMaggio and Joe Torre and Ron Sano and some of the great players that have come through, of course, with the Yankees and Joe Pepitone and Yogi Berra and some of the great Italian American ball players that they had aside from DiMaggio, but guys like Anthony Iapochi as well, a uh, hitting coach, maybe not someone that's top of mind like an Anthony Rizzo is or even a Mike Napoli, but to honor a guy like that, a baseball lifer, a guy who has given so much to the game and one of our upcoming honorees as well, our executive award recipient tonight, J.P. Ricciardi will be coming up. Another great example of an Italian-American who has given so much to the game, not even on the field, but, but off of it as well. And in the front office as a former general manager of the Toronto Blue Jays and, of course, being involved with so many other teams as well. You know, J.P. is another guy worthy of an award that, that didn't have a Hall of Fame career on the field, but has certainly been giving as far as his life to the game of baseball. You may have seen it just a moment ago, but we want to, again, encourage you to check out our online memorabilia auction. It ends at 1030 tonight. It's a big part of our fundraising efforts for the evening. We've got all kinds of sports memorabilia, movies, rock and roll, VIP experience packages, a chance to mingle with Jacob DeGrom. There's a private VIP cocktail party. Jacob's not Italian, but he's the best pitcher in baseball, so that's a pretty good thing. And all memorabilia will arrive to you before Christmas, so some very cool gift ideas. And the amazing experience and vacation packages, they never expire. So you can plan for them whenever you feel comfortable traveling again. And whenever you want to get back out uh, onto a plane or into a hotel and feel like that's safe again, these packages never expire. The link is going to appear on your screens throughout the evening. We just saw it a few moments ago. And there's still some amazing things with no bids yet. So you might be able to get an item maybe on, on the steel that you might not have expected and again, every bid helps the IABF in a huge way. So please bid off it, and we appreciate your support. Wait, wait, uh, a message from the logo. The uh, the link is also in the comments if somebody wants to click on it. And if they don't want to bid on an item, there's a there's a tab for donations. If you just want to make a, a straight-up donation to the foundation, you could do that too. Well, there you go. That's Mike DeSapio's voice. He's been our Gallo producer tonight. And uh, the man behind the logo, the IABF logo, this evening. So right now it's time to honor the 2020 Executive Honoree as we welcome the former Blue Jays GM, a man who was certainly a big part of the Mets pennant winning 2015 season. And I hear they're getting the band back together in, in New York. Sandy Alderson is back with the Mets. But JP is a member of the San Francisco Giants right now. And JP Ricciardi is our 2020 executive honoree. To welcome him, we introduce our 2017 winner, Mr. Gary Perone. Hey everybody, Gary Perone, 2017 IABF Executive of the Year. Um, the Italian American Baseball Foundation is near and dear to me and I'm very honored to be presenting the uh, 2020 IABF Executive of the Year. This gentleman has been in the game a very long time began playing minor league baseball for a bit, coaching the Yankee farm system before actually getting his big break and working in the front office, where in 1996, he would go on and work as a special assistant to Sandy Alderson with the Oakland Athletics. In 1997, JP would stay with the Oakland A's when Billy Bean took over as GM, and he would serve as director of player personnel. As time went along, 
JP was catching the eyes of a lot of people in the industry. And the one team that grabbed him was the Toronto Blue Jays, where he was given his big break and became general manager for the Toronto Blue Jays from 2001 to 2009. And then following that was the time I had a chance to finally get to meet JP myself in person. Um, I met JP when he came over to work with the Mets and he was, uh, he joined Sandy Olison as they were together from 2010 to 2018. But uh, JP had a great hand in uh, that 2015 World Series team that the Mets had. So I've been great. And I know JP right now is the Senior Advisor of Baseball Operations for San Francisco Giants. Uh, so long body of work, a lot of players that he's helped and a lot of players that he signed. Um, great baseball man. And I'm very excited to say that this year, J.P. Ricciardi, you are the 2020 IABF Executive of the Year. Congratulations. J.P., congratulations. Let's hear that New England accent of yours. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. Good to see you again. Um, I, I appreciate the uh, the introduction. I'm very honored to have uh, been chosen to receive this award. Uh, so many other people are uh, probably more warranted to get it. I'd like to thank uh, the organization for thinking of me. I'd like to congratulate Lee, who I've gotten to know and have known for several years and always looked up to as a player. I was a minor league player in the Mets organization when he was in the big leagues. And obviously being Italian, you always looked up to him. Uh, but we've become friendly as the years have gone on. Uh, Anthony, very happy for you and the, the work you've done with the Cubs. So it's a, it's an honor for me to be able to, to share the stage with you guys. Uh, the award means so much to me, more so because I think um, when you look back at uh, the contributions that Italians have made, not only in baseball, but in the world, uh, I can't help but think of my parents. Uh, my dad was a minor league player in the Red Sox organization. My mother never, ever let us forget uh, what our Italian roots were. Uh, we have a color braised background, so that probably explains a lot of things. But, uh, you know, their, their continued uh, traditions and always making us know how proud we should be of being contributors to America and I'd have to thank my grandparents because if they didn't have the guts back in 1905 to get on boats and come over here, not being able to speak the language, having no promises, uh, sending six sons to World War II, 10 of my uncles served in the military, um, I, I, I've, I've got it easy compared to what they did and what they pro what most of the people on this call have probably had the same story. So. You know, I owe so much to my grandparents uh, and most importantly, my parents. So this is a great honor that I don't take lightly. And, uh, you know, like Anthony uh, said, I've always found myself somehow navigated toward the Italian player. I'll tell you a quick story about Frank Catalanato. I had Frank in Toronto. He was a great player for us. One year he got hurt at the end of the season and he didn't end up getting his incentive bonuses. And I brought him in the office and I said, Frank, I got to tell you something. I said, you know, you're going to be short on your bonuses this year, right? He says, yeah, I'm short. A few games, games played. And I don't even know what the bonus was. It wasn't a huge bonus, but uh, I said, I'm going to give you the bonus. And I said, you know why? He said, no. I said, I'm going to tell you two reasons why. One, you did a great job for us and you're a really good player and you represent the Blue Jays like I want everybody to represent us. But second, because you're Italian. I said, and if you tell anybody that, I'll deny it. <laughs> so I don't know if Frank's still listening, but he, he can vouch for that story. I think we all believe that. Natalie and Craig, question, JP? That was great. I mean, come on now. <laughs> the, the pride of central Massachusetts just came in hot right there with that story. So you just sold yourself out after you, uh, said, you right. told him not to tell anybody, but it's, it's okay. You've paved at your road time. already. It's, it's at fun. the time, Chris. It's yeah. been 10, 12 years. It's okay. Yeah, exactly. Your limitations are up. And, and I don't blame you. I tell you what, anybody with a vowel on the end of their last name is okay in our book. But um, congratulations, obviously, on the award. Um, my question is going to be personal, obviously, because I, we're from the same area. I mean, grew up 30 minutes from Worcester, less than 30 minutes. Uh, watched you coach high school basketball games at Holy Name. Uh, 
just talk about a little bit about what it was like to, to be a central Massachusetts kid. And, and then obviously to, to go on and, and do all the great things that you've done in baseball. And, and could you've ever imagined it as you're growing up? Wait, I just need to interrupt a quick second. In one of the comments, Frank goes, true story. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Frank, we're listening. <laughs> yeah, great, great guy too. Um, you know, like, like everybody on this call, um, my goal was to be a big league player. I was fortunate enough to play in the minor leagues. Uh, never got a chance to play in the big leagues. You know, it's, it's a select group to get to play there and you appreciate that talent. Uh, but I never thought, you know, playing catch with my father in the backyard was going to lead to a lifetime of uh, being in baseball. I've never had another job. My uncle actually told me that. I thought manual labor was a shortstop. So uh, that shows you what my, uh, I, I'm the only Italian, I think, on this side of my family that has no physical skills to do anything. So, you know, I was blessed to be in baseball. But, uh, you know, as Chris can tell you, Central Mass, the area we're from, it's a great baseball area to, with a great baseball tradition. You know, big leaguers like Richie Gedman and Ronnie Dowling and Chris and, and Mark the Bird Fitterich and so many guys. So it's a, it's a very good area uh, baseball-wise, and I think it's probably the area that produces the most athletes uh, that go on to play a professional sport in Massachusetts. So very honored to be from here and uh, just very fortunate to have made my living in baseball. And talking about your background and all the many hats that you've worn in your baseball career, whether it was a, playing in the minor leagues, a GM, a coach, um, a scout, you even dabbled in broadcasting, what would you tell your younger self and all the young boys and girls who are aspiring to have a career in baseball, whether it's on the field or off the field? Yeah, I would have said spend more time hitting because I could run, throw, and field, but I couldn't <laughs> hit. So that would be my, my advice to my stuff. <laughs> That's um, awesome. But, uh, you know, the game is changing so much. Um, one thing I would like to see the young kids coming up in the game is don't forget the guys and the people that have come before you because there's been so many people that have really paved the way. And you've heard Lee, you've heard Joe, you've heard all these guys talk about the Tories and the, the Mazzillis and the Berras and guys like that. But there's been other people. There's been so many scouts, Italian-American scouts, that have done an amazing job in this game that have paid the price for you, uh, uh, opened doors for you. And I think it's important that you know the history and the people that have done that for you. So as you continue to grow, I always tell people when they say, how do you thank me? I say, just go out and do a good job and work hard so that the next person who comes along, you could pass on that same wisdom and those same opportunities to them and they'll, they'll repay you that way. Uh, but, you know, I'd like to see more of the baseball guys stay in our game. We're kind of losing them a little bit. Uh, but I think anybody who can remember the people that have gone before them, I think would be uh, the best advice I could give anybody. I like it. It's perfect. Honestly, it's perfect. It's, uh, it's an honor to share a screen with you. I wish this was uh, in person and live. I mean, I don't know where you are. I don't know if you're in Central Mass, but probably have a socially distanced cup of coffee if you are at some point. So well, it's, great, it's great to be on with you guys. And once again, I, I can't thank you enough for, uh, for this award. This is a great organization. And, uh, Hopefully we can get more Italian Americans in baseball involved with this. Hi, right, JP. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And hope to see you soon, bud. That was JP Ricciardi. He is our executive honoree this year. Natalie and Chris, thank you very much. Great job tonight. I think they're on. But we appreciate Natalie Spedalieri and Chris Calabello. Check out their podcast, Spaghetti and Baseballs. And uh, make sure you see all their episodes that they have done so far. You just heard JP. You've heard all of our speeches tonight. Our, our gala is not just a fundraising event. It's, this is an opportunity for our honorees, our members, and supporters to celebrate our foundation's achievements and our heritage. And our heritage inside the game of baseball. You didn't hear JP talk about all the all-stars that he has scouted and signed in his career. You didn't, talk, you didn't hear Anthony Iapochi talking about all the home runs he's helped Chris Bryant and Anthony Rizzo hit. And you have, didn't hear Lee Mazzilli talk about the time he stole 40 bases in a big league season or how great it was that he made some great catches or had some big hits in big moments. You heard them talk about family. You heard them talk about their friends and the relationships they've made inside the game. And you've talked about how much their heritage has meant to them along the way. Lee Mazzilli cozying up with Joe Torre on his first day in the big leagues. Anthony Iapochi separating all his baseball cards. And J.P. Ricciardi making sure that he took care 
of Frank Catalinato. That's what the Italian American Baseball Foundation is all about. I come from the National Italian American Sports Hall of Fame. My cousin George Randazzo dedicated the last 42 years of his life to those things, to this heritage, to all the sports in his case. And I'm proud to be a part of the Italian American Baseball Foundation as well. And the man who is behind all of it, the founder of the IABF, the man who is able to pull all of this together and run this organization and give us this platform for Italian Americans in baseball. We introduce him now. It's Joe Quagliano. Thank you for joining us tonight. I want to start by congratulating Lee, Anthony, and JP. Welcome to the IABF family, guys. I would like to acknowledge our IABF board and committee members, our sponsors and IABF members who made this night possible. Your passion for our foundation is truly amazing. Without your help and dedication, we could not have achieved our goals during the past five years. 2020 has been a difficult year for all. However, we hope that 2021 will allow us to get back to our mission and our baseball clinics in Italy, as well as our equipment donations to Italy. As 2021 approaches, we are working on having our first scholarship recipient. This is a great achievement for the IABF as combining baseball and education is a major part of our mission. We have achieved a great amount these past five years and I look forward to what we can and will do in the next five years. I hope you will continue to support the IABF as we move forward with our mission. Thank you again for your support. And I look forward to seeing everybody in 2021. God bless. Joe, thank you very much. And thank you for all you do with the IABF. Another big power hitter in the IABF family. We have had the gala at his restaurant, Carmine and Sons Pizzeria, plenty of times in Brooklyn. And we'd like to introduce as well, Carmine Gango. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of myself and the whole entire IABF family, I would like to congratulate our IABF honorees, Lee Mazzilli, Anthony Iapochi, and J.P. Rashad. It is our honor and our pleasure to have you as our 2020 IABF honorees. The hard work and dedication you have given to the game we all love has been truly amazing. You have made all Italian Americans proud. We congratulate you and we wish you all the best. Thank you. I also like to thank Wayne Randazzo and Mike DeSapio for organizing our first virtual gala. Thank you. I would like to thank all our board members for all your hard work and dedication you have given throughout the year. A special thank you to Natalie Spalieri and Chris Calabello for launching our first IABF podcast, Spaghetti and Baseballs. Last but not least, I would like to thank our leader, Mr. Joe Quagliano. Your hard work and your dedication you have given to IABF has been truly amazing and never goes unnoticed. I hope to see you all soon in 2021, but until then, facciamo un buon Natale, un buon anno e ricorda sempre baseball. Ciao. All right, Carmine, thank you very much. And it means uh, so much to all of us, the Italian American Baseball Foundation. This was our fifth gala. It's our first one like this. We hope we never have to do another one like this, but we are glad that you were able to join us for this evening's show on your screen tonight. Our Italian heritage is steeped in baseball tradition, from DiMaggio to Lucas Giolito, who threw a no-hitter for the Chicago White Sox in 2020. The IABF is committed to continuing this tradition so our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, and beyond can have the same sense of pride in their heritage as we all do. We ask you to visit our website for future IABF events and sponsorship opportunities at www.iabf.foundation. Thank you for participating in our virtual gala tonight. We wish you a very healthy and happy and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year as well. Stay safe, stay well, and we do hope to see you again for our 2021 gala in person, our sixth annual gala. Thank you very much and good night.